I think the biggest winner at E3 last week was Xbox Game Pass. There's just so much. The value is undeniable. In fact, the way that Xbox pr- pr- approached, I was going to say pronounced, the way that they approached their E3 conference was to show game after game after game after game. 27 games launching on day one to Game Pass out of the entire 30 games that were showed. There are a lot of games that we don't even know about, deals probably in the back end that we don't know about that are being made that's just going to make Game Pass continually more exciting. We know it's a good deal for Xbox. Xbox, it's their strategy. Get people in this subscription service, the Netflix of gaming, so to speak. We know it's a great deal for gamers. Yes, absolutely. Look at all these games I get access to for a low monthly fee. It's unlike anything that has ever existed before for gamers, and it's just a fantastic deal. But is it good for publishers? Well, increasingly, we are getting stories coming out that it is good for publishers, and it's understandable for like low-end independent developers, and low-end's the wrong term, but smaller studios, independent developers. It just makes sense why it's good for them. It gets them exposure, people playing their game, particularly if they've made a good game that they otherwise wouldn't get. But is it good for bigger publishers, like a Square Enix? Well, in a new story today, Square Enix says yes. It has been, particularly for their game Outriders. We're going to go over it today. We're going to talk about some of the details that they break down that I find fascinating and interesting, which really just kind of underscores the success that Game Pass has, the potential that Game Pass has, and why, if it is indeed good for developers, it might be game over already. Before we jump into it, though, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. We're the X1 Bros. We're about all things Xbox on this channel. We're dropping daily news videos. We've got a weekly podcast here. Hit the notification bell. Be informed when we go live. Let's jump into it. Square Enix believes Outriders Xbox Game Pass launch has paid off. Now, this is a new IP, so and they talk about that a little bit in this article, but let's go over it. It did drop on April 1st. It came day one to Game Pass, which we didn't expect. It was kind of a surprise, and it was a pleasant surprise because this game had a lot of hype behind it. Uh, and the fact that you could jump in if you're a Game Pass subscriber day one, amazing, fantastic value. It is one of the highest profile third party games so far to arrive on Game Pass on the day of its release. And Square Enix believes the boost to the online shooter's player count means the decision was indeed justified. Quote, In regards to the response to Outriders, while there were slight issues with bugs and the like on launch, we believe it has gotten off to a good start as a new IP. This was said by Square Enix president Yosuke Matsuda during the company's full year financial results briefing on May 13th. The comments have only today been published in English, so VGC Video Games Chronicle went through and transcribed these. This is a meeting from a while ago. Here's what he continued to say. In addition, we have been pleasantly surprised as the digital sales ratio for the title have been very high and the number of active users has also beaten our expectations. We believe that our decision to make Outriders available with Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass as soon as the title launched also worked in our favor to build and install the base for the game. Now in games like this, in games like Destiny, it totally makes sense why Game Pass would work for a game like Outriders. These games, they're basically MMOs. There's this hybrid MMO model that like a Destiny or a Division type of style, and it's dependent on your player base. And so when you're a new IP, being on something like Game Pass with 23 million subscribers, that opens up and creates this player base for you that perhaps you might have struggled to get. Now, I don't think that Square Enix would have struggled to get that. This game already had a ton of hype, but I do think... It opens you up and perhaps players would wait for reviews or if if especially if there's bugs at launch. Well, I'm not going to jump into this game that takes away all of that hesitancy and anyone on Game Pass was able to jump in day one. I myself jumped in day one and played it and that does build for you a nice base, which is really nice. On May 19th, Square Enix did say in a press release that Outriders is on track to become the company's next major franchise following a a successful launch month in terms of player numbers numbers. Now, the game attracted over 3.5 unique players between its April 1 release and May 1st, according to internal data from its publisher. Although it didn't break down the figure at all or comment on Xbox Game Pass specifically at the time, so it remains unclear what percentage of the player base the service subscribers account for. In an article published on VGC on Thursday, Ampere Analyst, sorry, Ampere Analyst Piers Harding Rolls said certain games appeal where appear. Gosh, I can't read. Certain games appear well suited to Xbox Game Pass, and Outriders ticked a lot of those boxes. 
Here's what Pierce said. He said, quote, certain types of games, uh, certain types of day one games are particularly suited to Game Pass. Generally, those that benefit more from a ready made audience compared to just competing with other premium releases in the Microsoft store. He continued. These include games based on new IPs. Outriders was a new IP. Smaller independent titles. This was not a smaller independent title, but that makes complete sense. Uh, and those that are service-based and monetize in-game. Online multiplayer titles or those that might struggle to gain exposure versus the biggest AAA games. I completely agree on all those fronts. It just makes sense. It makes logical sense why Game Pass would benefit smaller independent titles, why they would benefit service-based models, monetization in games, online multiplayer titles. It gives you a boost to your online structure, and then you're able to sell like a battle pass to them, for instance, uh, within your game, especially as a multiplayer. Uh, or if you're a new... Square Enix, while they're a huge publisher, this was a new IP. So a new IP, people, I, I don't have experience with this game. Is it going to be what it is? It lets, it allows people to sort of jump into your game at a no-risk trial time. And it looks like that it paid off for Square Enix. I do think it's a big deal that Square Enix says and said that they believe that Xbox Game Pass launch has paid off. Now, while this is from an old meeting that Square Enix had with uh, a financial meeting. It was just transcribed to English uh, by VGC, so big ups to them. The more of these news stories that come out, the more publishers are going to want to be on board. And again, we don't know what the back-end deals look like for Game Pass right now. And overall, I mean, I just think Game Pass is crushing it. I think Microsoft, again, is taking that right approach. That's what their entire approach was this last E3. Whether you like that or not, it is clearly their strategy going forward. The more publishers that jump on and big name publishers saying that it has benefited them is just good for not only Microsoft, for Xbox, for Game Pass, but also for us as gamers. As more big publishers will jump on and and as a Game Pass subscribers, it's only going to benefit us more. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of this news story? What do you think of, of Game Pass? What do you think about publishers seeing this as a good thing? Let me know in the comments below. Again, don't forget to hit that likes button. Subscribe to this channel. We're the X1 Bros. This is all things positive gaming and Xbox. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.